Our Heavenly Father, it's once again that we stand in this place. We come on this morning, God, thanking you for all of your many blessings. Thank you for how you have watched over us and how you kept us. And you allowed us to come together once again on this platform. We thank you for all those who are tuning in, those who have a thirst for the knowledge of your word. We ask God that you just continue to bless us that we might receive what you've given us through these discussions. We ask you to continue to bless your churches all over the land and country, that we may be that light that sitteth upon the hill. Those who are lost in darkness will be able to find their way home. For these blessings and all others, we thank you and we ask you to just continue to keep us in your care. In the mighty name of Jesus to Christ we pray. And say amen, amen. Once again, we say good morning. And we're so glad that you joined us this morning. Today is Sunday, October 30, 2022. And this morning we're wrapping up our theme for the month of October, which is sharing the love. And our lesson topic for today is true love. The lesson scriptures, 1 John 4, chapter, verses 7 through 12, Matthew 5, chapter, verses 43 through 48. Our key verse, dear friends, let us love one another, for love is of God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. And that's 1 John, the fourth chapter and the first verse. The essential question, is there a difference between true love and God's love? Is there a difference? Our lesson aims at the end of this lesson on today. The participant will understand that true love can only come from the heart. That love, true love requires action. And that you should never disappoint the one you love or the one who loves you. The introduction to today's lesson. As we begin our discussion on true love today, we understand that this is a subject that affects all of us because we all have people that we love. It can be very disappointing when we show love to our family and friends and don't receive love in return. And, and there, there have been circumstances or cases where family members have had disagreement and they haven't spoken with each other for a period of time, even for years. But when they meet each other again, when they see each other, the love should still be there. Even though there may have been some separation, that love that you have for your family or for your significant other, it should not de decrease over the years. When love is unrequited, and that's what we're talking about, unrequited love, but when love is unrequited, we go through periods of emotional ups and downs. Think about how it felt the last time you had your heart broken by someone you really cared about. And if you've never had this happen to you, then you, you're extremely blessed and you can be excused from the rest of this lesson. Just kidding. Hang with us. The point is, though, that when you think about how you felt when this happened to you, we're talking about unrequited love, when it happened to you, now think about how much God loves us and how he must feel when we do not do what he has commanded us to do, or when we don't praise and honor him like we should. What happens when we do that? unrequited love towards God? What happens when we do that and we decide that we're going to come back at some point? We're going to come back to God. What happens? He takes us back, don't he? He doesn't ask us about why we, why we uh, got away from him. He doesn't ask about the things we did when we, when we were away from him. He just accepts us back into the fold. Now ain't that love. True love requires more than just words. It requires action. God gave his only son out of love for us. How are you expressing your appreciation for this gift, for the gift of God, which is his son, Jesus Christ, dying for our sin? How do you express your appreciation for that? That's the question. Now, let's move on to our exposition. In the first part of our, our exposition, we're going to talk about true love according to the world. 
According to the world, true love does not stop even when it's unrequited. And we talked about that already in the introduction and we gave you an example of that. The second thing that the world says about true love, it is not based on physical attraction. Physical attraction is lust and not love. Love is not based on physical attraction. Just like the expression says, beauty is only skin deep. And believe me, that expression was around before the temptation recorded it. But it, beauty is only skin deep. Sometimes we are attracted to someone physically because of the way that they look. But that kind of attraction will not last because it is not love. It's what's on the inside of a person that's going to keep the relationship together. Not just based on look, but what the person is on the inside. What type of heart does the person have? That's the thing that's going to determine whether it's true love. True love will never fail. You can't just turn it on and off. The feeling is the same today as it was yesterday. And as we mentioned earlier, even if you separate it from the people that you love, if it's true love, it is not going to fail. It's still going to be the same. Another thing about true love, if you truly love someone, you can never forget them. You will not forget them. You may be separated, you may not see them for a while, but whenever you come into contact again, that love is still there. You do not forget the people that you love. There's no past tense to true love. You can't just say, I used to love them, but I don't anymore. I mean, you can say that, but it's not true love. Maybe it was just, maybe it was just puppy love. If you had an affection for someone, which reminded me, I heard a story a long time ago about a young man. And I must mention at the, at the upstart of this, that this was during the time when people didn't have a lot of cars, especially young people. Most of them had to walk to get where they wanted to go. So this young man had an attraction for a girl. So he decided that he would write her a letter. In that letter he wrote, told her about how strong his love was. He said, for your love, I'll swim the deepest ocean. I'll climb the highest mountain. There's nothing I wouldn't do for your love. And that went on for a while until he came to the close of the letter. When he got to the close of the letter, he wrote, P.S., I'll be over to your house tomorrow if it doesn't rain. So that love wasn't as deep as he said it was because he wasn't willing to get wet for her. So that's, that's how love is. True love we're talking about. Now let's move on. The second part of our exposition, we want to talk about love comes from God. And we go into the book, as usual, we'll give you the introductory part. We look at some real life situation. And then we go to the book, because we have to apply that to our lives. And so we go to 1 John, the fourth chapter. We're going to focus on verses 7 through 12. In verse 7 of that fourth chapter of 1 John, it says, True love comes from God, and whosoever love has been born of God and knows God. If you love, you have been born of God and you know God. Is there a difference between true love and God's love? That was our essential question. So now when you look at this, when it says that true love comes from God and that anyone born of God knows, knows born of God and knows God, that's true love. And so that, that would be the answer to our question about the difference between true love and God's love. God's love is true love. The next point, it's from verse 8. It says, Whosoever does not love does not know God. Why is that? It goes on to say, Because God is love. So if you know God, then you know love. You can't separate the two. You can declare that God is the head of your life. You can be Holy Ghost filled and fire baptized and on your way to heaven anyhow. But if you don't have love in your heart, you're like sounding brass or tinkling cymbal. We talked about on the third Sunday in this month, 
from the first first Corinthians the thirteenth chapter. We talk about that sound and brass and tinkling cymbal. In other words, you're just making a lot of noise and there's nothing to it. It has to be backed by love. In verse 9, it says, God showed his love by sending his only son into the world that we might live through him and that his love was made manifest among us. God didn't, didn't, didn't just tell us that he loved us or tell us about his love. He showed it by sending his only son into the world to die for our sin. And it says his love was made manifest by that act. It was made manifest among us. And made manifest mean that it was made clear. It was easily perceived and easily understood that God loved us through that act. In verse 10, it says, this is true love. Not that we love God, but because he loved us and sent his son as atonement for our sins. We love him because he first loved us. How can we not love a God who did as much for us as he did? And then verse 12, verse 11, since God so loved us, we should love one another. Why is that? The answer is in verse 12. It says, if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. If we love one another, God will live in us. The next part of our exposition, we're going to talk about, we talk about what true love is. But in the next part, we're going to talk about the tests of true love. How do I know if I have that true love that we're talking about? Let's go to Matthew, fifth chapter. We'll begin at verse 43 and go through verse 48. Verse 43 says that we should love our enemies and pray for those who persecute us so that we may be children of our Father in heaven. Now we need to break that down because it says something there. Did he really mean that we should love our enemies and those who do us wrong, we should pray for them? That's what it says. If you look, if you're looking in the Bibles at the fifth chapter of Matthew, verse 43, that's exactly what it says. It says you have to do that that you may be the children of your father in heaven. So if you don't do it, then you're not a child of the king. Now some may say that, that that is that is too hard. That is too hard. I can't do it. Maybe it is. It's too hard for us. That's why we can't do it without the help of the Lord. You have to go down on your knees and pray. That's why he said pray for your enemy. Because when you're praying for them, then that would convince you that you don't need to get back at them, but you need to love on them. And so you can't do it on your own strength. You have to rely on God to put that spirit and that heart in you that you can love those who do you wrong. Let's go to verse 45. It says that God allows the sun to shine on the evil as well as the good. Not only that, he sends rain on the just as well as the unjust. That, that means it doesn't matter what you did or what you are doing. It doesn't matter because God loves you regardless of. And when we talk about him sending his son to die for us, that was for all of us regardless of whether that love is returned or not. And I think about, you know, the feast on the mountainside where you fed the multitude. All those people that were there, they weren't there because they loved Jesus. Some were there to be nosy. Some were there just to see what, what was going to happen. And some had other ulterior motives for being there. But regardless, he fed them all. He didn't ask for those who believed and fed them. He fed all of them. And that's a good example of how we should be. Verse 46 says, If you love those who love you, what reward do you deserve? Even the Pharisees and the tax collector does this. Now when he used the Pharisees and tax collector, he was talking about those that don't really believe. Because the Pharisees didn't believe in the resurrection of the dead, so therefore they didn't believe in Jesus. They said that they believed in God, but they did not believe in Jesus. And of course, the tax collector went around 
cheating people out of their money by charging them more for taxes than they should. So he was using these people as an example, as those who do not deserve the, the reward, but they, they get it anyway because God loves us all. It's an unconditional love. Verse 48 says, you must complete, even you must be complete, even as your father is complete. That means it cannot be a halfway thing. When he says you must love everybody, you have to do that, just as your father does, and as Jesus Christ, his son, did. Now let's go to our lesson of pride. Do you think there is too much hate in the world today? How do you think God feels about the lack of love and understanding that we show towards each other these days? Now I know the, the answer to the first question, do you think there's too much hate in the world today? Most of us would say yes. But how do you think God feels when he looks down from heaven and he sees what's going on among his people? It's something to think about. I'm sure that most of you remember the song entitled, What the World Need Now is Love. And it was recorded by a lot of different artists, but the one that most of us probably remember is the one that was recorded by Dionne Warwick. The first verse of the song says, what the world needs now is love, sweet love. It's the only thing that there's too little love. And then it goes on to say, Lord, we don't need another mountain. There are enough mountains and hillsides to climb. There are oceans and rivers enough to cross, enough to last to the end of time. But what the world needs now is love. It's the only thing that there's too little love. I don't think those words have ever been truer than they are today. With all of the problems that we're facing, we could really use a lot more love and less hate. The haters are trying to take over. You see them everywhere, in real life and over the internet. But if we have that true love that we talked about during today's discussion, we will be able to cancel out the negative thoughts and actions of the enemy, live in a world of peace and harmony as God intended for us. Now that's cancel culture in a good way. Won't you decide today to spread love and not hate? Because no matter how dark it seems, love will always win out in the end. And on that positive note, we will bring today's discussion to a close. We encourage you, keep on praying, keep on loving, and let God be God. And we'll talk to you again soon.